Hello and welcome to Theater Arts Class. Today this video is going to be going over theater terminology. So this will be helpful to those of you who may have missed class on the day when we went over it in class. It's also going to be helpful for all of you so that you can study for your theater terminology quiz. We're going to be going over different types of stages, our stage directions, different types of curtains, and also other areas of the theater, parts of the theater, that are important to know if we're ever working on a show. So we're going to go ahead and get started. The first type of stage we're going to talk about today is also the most common type of stage we're going to see in the theater. It is called the proscenium stage. If you've ever been in the auditorium here at the middle school, you know what a proscenium stage looks like, because that's the type of stage we have here. The proscenium stage gets its name from the architectural feature it has called the proscenium arch. Every proscenium stage has a proscenium arch, and the proscenium arch is used as a framing device. It helps to frame the audience's point of view so that they're looking towards the stage and not seeing any of the things backstage that we don't want them to see. Proscenium stages only have the audience on one side of the stage, directly in front of the stage. Additionally, proscenium stages have a feature called the apron. The apron is the part of the stage that comes out in front of the proscenium arch. And you can see that labeled on the diagram right up there. The next type of stage we need to know is called a thrust stage. They call it a thrust stage because the stage floor itself is kind of thrusted out towards the audience. In a thrust stage, the audience is on three sides of the stage, to the left of the actors, to the right of the actors, and directly in front of the actors. The way that I like to remember a thrust stage is that thrust and three both start with the letters THR, start with that thr sound. So a thrust stage has the audience on three sides. Next, we're going to talk about an arena stage. In an arena stage, the audience is on four sides of the stage, all around the stage, which is why we also sometimes call this stage theater in the round. You can see here on the diagram, there's audience on all four sides of the stage. The last type of stage that we are going to talk about today is called a black box theater. As you can see from the picture, a black box theater is a large, square, completely black room. The floors are black, any curtains that they may have will be black, and it is a completely square space, which is why we call it a black box. A black box theater is a unique type of theater space called a flexible staging area. The seats are not screwed into the ground or bolted down, so we can move the audience wherever we want for the show that we're doing. In this image, they have the audience on one side of the black box, sort of like it's a proscenium theater. But if they wanted to, they could have the audience on two sides, on three sides, on four sides. They could have the audience be stuck in the middle if they wanted to and act around the audience members. So it is a flexible staging space in a black box theater. You can move where the audience is sitting for your show. Now that we know the different types of stages there are, we're going to learn our stage directions. We're gonna start with upstage and downstage. Historically, stages were not always flat. Sometimes they would be on a tilt and the back part of the stage would be higher up than the front part of the stage. Nowadays, most of our stages are flat, but we still use the terms upstage and downstage. Upstage being the back part of the stage and downstage being the front part of the stage towards the audience. Next, we're gonna do stage right and stage left. If you're an actor facing the audience head on, stage right would be the right side of the stage. Stage left would be the left side of the stage. 
However, actors move around a lot on stage. So even if they turn a different way and are facing a different way, it's still going to be stage right is over on that side of the diagram, stage left over that side of the diagram. The easiest way to figure it out is if you get confused on which side is stage right and stage left, turn your body and face the audience area and find your right and left from the actor's perspective. It's the stage right is the right area and stage left is the left area. We also have an area of the stage called center stage and it's exactly where you think it is, right in the center of the stage. On this diagram, the little person is standing at center stage. Once you have upstage, downstage, stage right, stage left, and center stage understood, you can start using more complicated terms like upstage right, which is the upper part of stage right, or downstage center, which is the center area of the downstage, or center stage left, which is the stage left part, but in the center of the stage, not really upstage or downstage. We've finished up with our stage directions. Let's move on to different types of stage curtain. The first one we're going to see is called the grand drape. The grand drape is able to conceal almost all of the stage from the audience's point of view. Oftentimes at the very beginning of a show, the grand drape will be closed and the audience can't see the stage so that we can take the time while the audience is filing in, getting to their seats, and work backstage, get the scenery ready, get everything in place for the show to begin. Once the show begins, we open up that grand drape and we can see the stage. We can see what we need to see. The grand drape is often very decorative like it is in this image right here. Sometimes it will be other colors, but the most common color is red for the grand drape. You need to know is called a border. Borders are fairly short curtains that are hung above the stage. We use borders to conceal or mask things that we don't want the audience to see that are hanging above the stage. Things like lighting fixtures, sound equipment, scenery that may be up in the lofts, anything that's hanging over the stage, we can conceal with borders. Next, we have the traveler curtain. And you can see me in this video demonstrating the traveler that we have in the auditorium in our middle school. Travelers are called travelers because they travel across the stage. They open in the very middle of the curtain. They can come open and travel across the stage, and then they can travel back to shut. I think we're about to see this coming. Yeah, here it goes. That is the traveler curtain. We can use travelers to conceal parts of the stage that we may want to reveal a bit later, and we can also use them to reveal something in the middle of the show. Additionally, sometimes, like in our stage in the middle school, the grand drape is technically also a traveler. Some grand drapes are opened by lifting up, but the grand drapes that are able to split in the middle and open from side to side, like the one we have, is also technically a traveler. Next, we're going to talk about the types of curtains we use to conceal the wings of the stage. The wings of the stage are the side areas of the stage that are off stage, where the audience generally can't see very well. And it's the part of the stage where actors will wait before they're going on stage. Generally, we will have scenery in the wings waiting to be pushed on stage. And we don't want the audience to be able to see those parts of the stage. The first type of curtain we use is a leg. You can see these legs right here and right here. They are a long, skinny curtain that runs parallel to the proscenium, so in line with the proscenium arch. You can see kind of a transparent version of the proscenium arch a little bit right here. That is where the proscenium arch would be if it was labeled on this diagram. And we're showing that the legs are in line with 
what would be the proscenium arch. Another way to think about it, if you can't remember parallel, is that the legs' edges hang from stage right to stage left. They go across the stage like this. We also have another type of curtain that's even better at concealing the wings. In this image, you can see some legs hanging parallel to the grand drape as well as the proscenium arch. And then you see this black curtain here. That is a tab, and a tab hangs perpendicular to the proscenium. So if the edges of a leg go from stage right to stage left, the edges of a tab go from upstage to downstage. And these tabs do an even better job of concealing the wings from the audience. You can also see borders labeled in this image. And you can see our first type of scenic uh, curtain, which is a backdrop. A backdrop is gonna be a curtain that you paint a scenic background on. So you can see in this next image, a backdrop is being painted right now. They are painting this curtain so that they can hang it up later and serve as a background for the show. Another type of scenic curtain that we use is called a cyclorama. A cyclorama is a curtain that instead of painting, we shine lights or projections on to create scenery. So you can see on one image, there's some pink and blue lights and one big round, very yellow light creating kind of a sunrise look. And then on the other image, we've got all different kinds of lights making a rainbow effect. This is a cyclorama. So the way I remember is you paint a backdrop and you light a cyclorama to make scenery. The last type of curtain that we're going to talk about is called a scrim. A scrim is a netted fabric curtain that we use in theater for certain special effects. For instance, in this image, you can see in the first image, the girl looks like she's standing alone on stage. And we're shooting the lights towards the front of the scrim, so it appears opaque. You cannot see through it. But when we change the lighting and start adding some light from behind the scrim, we can see the actors clearly that are behind that scrim and they can kind of appear as if out from nowhere. Beyond that, we can also use the scrim for really cool shadow effects in theater. So you can see here, there's a whole bunch of actors sitting and standing behind this scrim. The actors who are sitting are closer to the scrim and further away from the light source that's behind them, so their shadows look about the normal size of a human shadow. But the girl who's standing very close to the light has a shadow that's projected up onto the scrim, very large and larger than life, as if she's some type of goddess figure. And then you can also see from the front of the scrim, they are also projecting words onto the scrim. It says the creator's first water. I believe it's part of the script they are projecting onto that scrim. So we can use projections with this scrim as well to add in some other effects. But the scrim in theater is mainly used for special effects. Now that we've gotten through all the different types of curtains in a theater, we can start talking about the other parts of the theater we're going to need to know if we're ever in a show. We already spoke about the apron, which is the part of a proscenium stage in front of the proscenium arch. We also mentioned the wings of the stage, which are the areas to the sides of the stage that we don't want the audience to see, where the actors and the scenery will wait before it's their time to come on. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about the house. The house is what we call the audience seating area in a theater. So you can see a really big house in this image right in front of us. Uh, the house, I like to remember, is that the audience lives in the house the way that people live in houses. Next, we have the booth. The booth is a room at the very back of the house. There's generally going to be a big window 
so that the people inside the booth can see what's happening on stage. And that is the room where we're going to be running our lighting and our sound from. You can see in this image, we're looking from inside the booth and you can see the lighting and the sound boards right in front of us. A trap is an area under the stage that is space that we can use for a multitude of purposes. A trap door would be what we use if we want to have any actors or potentially some scenery coming up from beneath the stage to enter onto the stage. If there's ever a time when we're not using a trap door or having people enter the stage from the trap, a lot of the time the trap becomes storage areas for things for the theater under the stage. Next, we have a fly rail. Not every theater is going to have a fly rail, but a fly rail is going to be a system of ropes and pulleys in a very, very tall ceiling over the stage area. We can use these ropes and pulleys to lift things like curtains, scenery, and things up away from the stage, and then also bring them back in when we want them to come in. You can see in this image the actual pulleys at the very top of the ceiling, and you can see on the other image those little red handles are how we use the uh, pulley system. We can unlock the handle and start pulling on those ropes to bring scenery in, take it back out. Next, whether or not we have a fly rail in a theater, we're generally always going to have some pipes that are hanging over the stage. If there is a fly rail, they'll be hanging from the fly rail. If there's not one, they'll generally just be hung over the stage and there's not a way to pulley them in and out. There are two different types of pipes we use in theater. On the one image, you can see some battens. Those are regular pipes. We can hang things like curtains, hang scenery from a batten. The other image is an electric. The difference between a batten and an electric is that an electric has electricity run to it. So we can hang up things that need electricity, that need power for the stage on those pipes, on those electrics. Things like lighting instruments, speakers, microphones would be hung from an electric. There's also two imaginary lines on the stage that we need to talk about because they get referenced a lot, especially when directors are blocking actors, as well as anytime scenic designers or lighting designers are working on their designs for the stage. First, we have the proscenium line. You can see this little black dotted line right here. That proscenium line is directly in line with the proscenium arch. So in this diagram, you cannot see the proscenium arch because it would make it hard to see the rest of the diagram. But trust me when I say the proscenium line is in line with the proscenium arch and it separates the apron from the rest of the stage. We also have this blue dotted line right here. That is what we call the center line. If a director ever asks you to go get on the center line, you want to get in the very center of the stage. It cuts the stage down the middle from front to back, from upstage to downstage. And then the very last term we need to know is called spiking. In theater, a lot of times, we'll want to have something on stage in a very particular spot. So let's say we need to have a chair on a specific spot for the stage for the third scene of a show, but we don't use that chair in the other scenes. So we're going to have to be taking it on, bringing it back off at different times. We use spiking to mark the stage itself, the floor of the stage, so that we know where to put things. So if we were to mark for a chair, we would make a little mark that we would always know the chair goes in that spot. You can take the chair away now, but you'll know the next time the chair has to be brought in where it's supposed to be brought. Usually we spike with tape, as you can see here, 
but some theaters will use chalk lines instead. You can see in this image, there's lots of different spikes. So maybe on these green uh, cross spikes, we might put microphone stands or something like that. And this pink spike, maybe we'll put a podium or a chair or a table. All of the different colors of spikes will usually mean something to the specific show. So maybe a director will ask the person putting the spike down for the furniture, use blue spikes. If there's a place where the actor needs to be and we're marking that spot for the actor, maybe use yellow spike tape. That is spiking. And that's going to do it for us. That is the very last term that we need to know for our theater terminology test that's coming up. So if any of you have any questions, you should be able to contact me on Canvas, and hopefully I'll be able to answer that for you guys.